He is so. Someone said, you know, you, you, you keep doing the same thing, you'll keep getting the same thing. Right? So sometimes, anybody ever had that to happen where, where just stuff is not happening right for you? You know it's supposed to happen better than that. Well, it's not. And then you, you have to question what is going on. What is it that things aren't working out for me better than it is? Well, I, I submit that that's one of the things we ought to do. When it's not working, we ought to just pause for a little bit to find out, Lord, what's up? Sometimes we're asking everybody else. All right now. And we forget or neglect to ask God. How many know God has the answers? Amen. Amen. Question. Yes. You can't think of a question he doesn't have the answer to. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it's a biblical principle, and for the believer, it should be protocol that we go to God and seek him for answers. Yes. Yes. So often yes. we're talking to everybody else about stuff that only God can really tell us about. Yes. Amen. 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 Mm, Jesus. Right. So on today, on today, we're going to go into the Word, and um, we're going to look at at, at uh, kind of the. And I, I'll be in this series for a little while. Uh, we're going to be looking at at our core values. Our core values. Number one says God deserves nothing less than my, my best. best. We personalize it, not our best, not uh, their best, but. My best. So whatever you do, God still deserves my best. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. We want to keep it in that light because otherwise if it's our best and somebody else isn't doing it, then we feel like we off the hook. But no, God still woke us up. Whether they give God glory or praise or not, he still gave us health and strength. Right. Whether they give God praise and glory or not, he still protected us. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Amen. So we still owe him. So, so we own nothing less than our my personal best. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and then our, our second core value says people matter to God. God. Therefore, or because of that, people matter to me. Amen. You and I, we understand that God cares. Amen. Right? And uh, we can't ever mess around and lose sight of the fact that God is always watching how we do in others. Amen. Hello. Amen. Sometime around churches, folk act kind of, you know, stuck up and like they're better than somebody else. Come on, Bishop. Amen. Hello. Amen. Come on. Like we ain't come out of sin. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like we wasn't doing some of the same stuff other folk are still doing. Yeah. Come on in. No, I, listen, listen, listen. God want to take us somewhere right. and for us to know where he wants us to go. We're going to have to do it the way he wants us to do it. Amen. And and so because people matter to God, they ought to matter to us. And how we treat them, God's always watching. Amen. That's right. And getting by never means getting away. That's right. That's right. Show them up. Show them up. If you would, I'm going to ask you to go to 2 Samuel with me, chapter 21. 2 Samuel, chapter 20 and 1. Uh, the Bible is today, today, and forever. And so, since we know that he changes not, the Bible goes on to say that in him there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. Since we know that God is always the same, mm -hmm. then we want to take acknowledgement of things that have already happened All right. that we might understand what could happen even now. Amen. Bible said that those things were written that they may be examples unto us. Amen. So when we read through the scripture of all those various things that have happened in the Bible, Bible said they were written so we can learn from that. Amen. Yes, mm, yeah, God cares about the downtrodden. Amen. Yes, God. God cares about what we call the underdog. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hello, somebody. The marginalized. Yes. The poor. Yes. God cares. Yes, God. 
Are you there in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 21? Amen. 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 Let us come on in and get that seat. Would you, would you rest upon your feet with me? We're going to go into that word on today. Go into the word. 2 Samuel chapter 21. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. After I pray, we'll make a faith confession together. After the faith confession, I will read the word of the Lord in your hearing. You can feel free thereafter to have your seat in his presence. Let's pray. Mighty great God, I come to you today recognizing that without <coughs> you I can do nothing, and with you there's nothing that shall be impossible unto us. I pray now, dear God, that you will guide my words, my thoughts, yes, that you will use these lips of clay that you have made to bring honor and glory to your own name, and that you will speak to these, your people. Amen. Pray that you hide me behind the cross, that you might be lifted up, that you might be seen. And so now, dear God, I willingly Reduce my own self, dear God, yes. that you might be exalted, Lord Jesus. I thank you now that lives are being changed in this hour yes. for your glory, yes. in this service, yes. and for your praise. Yes. Thank you for meeting every need. Thank you that your word fails not, that it accomplishes what you intended. Yes. We are blessed and you are glorified. Yes. This is our prayer we ask it. Believe it, declare it in Jesus' mighty name, and all in agreement said amen. 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 Would you repeat after me? This is the word of God. This is, this is the word of God. God. It is life, it is life. life. To, me. to me. And because of God's faithfulness. And because of God's faithfulness. To his word. To his word. And my obedience. And my obedience. To him in faith. To him in faith. I now walk in love. I now walk in love. And the blessing. And the blessing. Of abundant life. Of abundant life. While you're yet standing, I'm reading from 2 Samuel chapter 21, starting in verse 1. It is recorded on this wise. Then there was a famine in the days of David. Three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to <coughs> slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Amen. I'd like to pause there for a bit and ask you to bear this thought in mind with me. Only two words, they matter. They matter. They matter. Come on, would you say that? They matter. They matter. Amen. Give God praise as you are welcome to have your seat in presence. They, they, they matter. Uh, a problem commonly arises when we overlook important things and important people. Uh, some have, have lost being because they didn't recognize the value of whatever it was. Maybe it's the season they were in. Maybe it's the people they were around. Maybe it's what they had in their possession. And if they don't recognize the value, then sometimes they'll give it away or misuse it or abuse it or lose it because they don't recognize its value. It's almost like these things really didn't matter. 
You know, I heard I heard a, a little poem uh, some time ago that talked about a minute. It said it's only just a minute. It's only 60 seconds in. Forced upon you, can't refuse it. But it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it. Give account if you abuse it. So it's only just a minute, but eternity is in. And you and I, sometime if we aren't careful, we'll waste away precious opportunities that God has afforded us. All right now. And, and, and so as we read here today, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the uh, a core value, uh, number two core value, and I'm working from the outside to in. So we're going to deal with number two, then we're going to number one. All right? All right? So today we're going to just be in the zone of number two. Uh, people matter to God, therefore people matter to me. Here is... The person, the Bible describes as the apple of God's eye. All right. This is King David. Mm -hmm. And uh, God has favored David. God had done some great things through David, by the hands of David. He brought a calm to Saul when an evil spirit would visit Saul. David would play on the harp, as it were, and, and, and uh, that spirit would leave Saul. Uh, David would be the one that God would use to slay Goliath when Goliath had rose up against the armies of Israel and defied them. God would use David. David was the one that God chose when God had rejected Saul and he withdrew his spirit from Saul, but he anointed David as his choice, even though at that time David did not reign as the king. Right. He was just a servant in the province of the king. Amen. 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 This same David, as he's leading the children of Israel, he is now the king, and Saul is now dead, and uh, they're experiencing some hard times. Mm -hmm. They're experiencing a famine in the land. We know that a famine is a time when there is no water. And because there is no water, things are drying up. And most of us know that if it stays dry long enough, the field goods are going to dry up. So, so no corn comes up and other things, the vegetative life does not come up. Amen. And when the vegetative life does not come up and you've used up your surplus, then all the beasts of the field start getting skinny and dying. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. When, when, when the famine lasts and lasts, then the water dries up and it's hard to get anything to be refreshed by. And this was the occasion with David. And David, the Bible said, they were in a famine for three years, year after year. You see, most of us can take a hard time when it comes and it goes. All right. Preach. But there's a real challenge when you have a hard time that won't seem to go. Amen. And this was, this was what was happening in Israel. Here you have a hard time that just seems to stay, and it stays, and it stays. And David knew he was God's man. And David said, oh, time out here. Wait a minute. This ain't going on too long. I'm telling you, there are some things that we ought to put a time out on. If things aren't happening in your life like you believe and know they ought to be happening, when you look at the word of God, it's time to say, oh, wait a minute here. I'm a child. Jesus. Yeah. All kinds of challenges in your body. Yeah. Can't hardly keep your mind on one thing. Yeah. Trouble happening on this hand and the other yeah. hand. Can't seem to get a break. You time out. Yeah. I'm God's man. I'm God's woman. Yeah. Something's wrong with this picture here. Yeah. And when you and I come to a place like that, we ought to stop and say, okay, God. Talk to me. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I don't know why it's going like it's going. God, I need you to talk to me. I need you to open up my understanding of something. I need you to remove the scale from my eyes so I can see something. Yes. Glory. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so David here, he cries out to the Lord. Bible says he inquires of the Lord, which means he asks God, God, why is this famine with us these three years? Why is it we can't get a breakthrough? Why is it that heaven is closed up and we get no way? Why is it that all of the life forms around us are drying up and dying? All right. Come on, Jesus. All right. Why? Yes, yes. Why, God, I know I'm your man. I don't understand this right here. Why? Jesus. God, I've been trying to do the right thing. I, I've been going to church. I, I, I'm paying my time. I'm trying to get folks out, but God, it don't seem like it's working for me. Why? Jesus. 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 And as he sought the Lord, God brought something to his attention. He Jesus. Thought of in his wildest dream. Jesus. You see, God can cause us to see what we otherwise could not see. Yes. Yes. Otherwise would not see, but we need to see. All right, now. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So, so, so when he inquires of the Lord, the Bible says it is for Saul and his bloody house. Jesus. It's not really connected to you so directly. It's connected to somebody that came before you. It's connected to another man's sin. It's connected to somebody else's trouble. It's connected to somebody else's disobedience. It's connected to somebody else's vileness that's caused this hardship to come on you. Let me tell you, it's not always that you got out of line. Amen. Jesus. No, 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 no. It's not always that you got out of line. But, but you suffered because of somebody else. Have you ever heard that sometimes you have to give up the right for the wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus. How many know that it's, it, it can be just a few folk acting up that make it hard for everybody? Yes, yes. yes. Not that you were acting up, but, but you suffered because of what they did. This is what David was experiencing and Israel was experiencing. Right, that Saul and his bloody house had done some things, a man that caused a hardship to later show up. Yes, oh, right. God, help me in here today. Let me tell you something. Things going to follow you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you right now. So things going to follow you. Good things. Good things. And or bad things. And or bad things. They're going to follow you. You got to know today that your obedience or your disobedience will cause things to come after your act of obedience or disobedience. Your act of obedience or disobedience will touch somebody else that's connected to you. That's right now. That's right. It is so. Bless him, Lord. It is so. And so here, 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 uh, 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 Saul was the disobedient one. Disobeyed God, and that's why he ended up losing the kingdom. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, disobedience yeah. brings loss. Yeah. Yeah. Disobedience brings pain. Yeah. Disobedience yeah. brings unrest. Yeah. You know, it's hard to give God a proper praise when you know you haven't been doing what you ought to do. Right. Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. It is so. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when, when you know the Lord has directed us on how we're to live, and if we walk it out some other kind of way, we may show up at the house of praise. We may be there at the time of worship. We Jesus, may even come to the hour of prayer. But we can't really get our prayer through Jesus. when we've been walking it out a wrong way. I'm telling you now, God is calling us to align with him in righteousness Amen. and to yes. holiness consistently. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It is so. Yes. Hallelujah. Now you can always find somebody can, you know, they, they're ready to celebrate with you outside of the things of God. But I'm telling you now, we're not so concerned or to be so concerned about somebody else celebrating with us outside of the things of God. We're more concerned with God celebrating us. Yes. Right yes. Hello. Right. Sometimes we're so concerned about fitting in with the crowd. Yes, yes, I'm Amen. talking to somebody in here today. Amen. We're so concerned about fitting in with the status quo. We're so, right. so concerned about fitting in with the homies and, you know, this my partner and my ride and die and all that kind of stuff. And we somehow neglect 
to think about that God that's forever been good to us. He's been forever watching over us. He's been forever seeing us through. He's been forever providing, forever protecting us, forever comforting us. Hallelujah! Forget about him. And we want to just be tight with the riding down. That devil is a liar. The Lord going to be my riding down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hello? Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. You see, they matter. They matter. They matter. People matter to God. Jesus. And so what happened was Saul, Saul in his, his haste, he ends up uh, uh, mistreating the Gibeonites. He slew a bunch of them, and he wasn't supposed to. They lied. It was like a setup, and, and, and he destroyed them, and, and, and God didn't forget it. Amen. Amen. God didn't forget it. Listen, listen. They weren't godly folk. They were, it's not like they were honoring the Lord Jesus. Right. You know, the Lord God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, no, no. That's not where they were. But there was a word that was given that they were going to be all right. And then they got destroyed. And God remembered it. My God, help me here today, Jesus. And so even though they weren't, quote, unquote, so much on the in crowd, God said, I still care about it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, there may be people that don't go to anybody's church. They may not even believe in God, but God cares about them. Yes. You. And you and I got to be careful because they matter to God. Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You know, we can, we can do some things and seem like we get by and can't nobody touch us, seem like some things can go by and it's all done and it's forgotten about. But just because it seemed to be forgotten among men, you can believe and rest assured it is not forgotten about with God. Hallelujah. And so, so when, when, when David seeks the Lord and, and God said it's because of Saul and his bloody house and because he slew the Gibeonites and, 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 and David found out the reason, so now it's time to do something about it. When God reveals to you the problem, now, now it's your turn. And if you and I are going to rec uh, recognize that things are out of balance, and we say, hold on, time out, wait a minute, I know this shouldn't go like this. God, what's the problem? God, give me some understanding. God, speak to me. God, disclose a reality for me. And he does it. Now, you didn't get that for nothing. All right. All right. All right. Now, you and I have to take the unction, the unction, the, the resolve to go ahead and do something about it. And what David did is he went to the Gibeonites and he said unto them, what, as it were, must I do? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Call them unto him. And the word says, wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Do you realize today that even though there are some folk, they don't go to church anywhere, that you, they, they still need to be uh, uh, speaking as it were or thinking and wishing blessings towards you? Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. You, we, we can't just walk past them or walk over them like whatever they think and however they feel don't matter because it does. And so here, David, them, they couldn't even get the land to produce anything for them because of a wrong that had been done to the Gibeonites. And here, this man stands and he says, he, uh, David says to him, so what, what do I have to do that we get blessed by you? Let me tell you, you and I ought to be concerned about what folk think. All right. Sometimes we have, I don't care what they think. Hello? Yeah, there's a time when you ought to care. You ought to care enough to be in alignment with God about what they think. Okay. Bible lets us know that, 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 you know, we ought to have a good name among those who are. Yes, without. yes, yes. So even though there's folk that's not in the church, they ain't going to know about the church. Probably never been in the church. May not ever go. Yes, yes. Bible said we ought to still have a good name among them. Yes. Well, what is that saying to us? Well, one of the things the Bible is telling us is that we ought to be people that's given to good works. The Bible said we ought to be rich in them. We ought to provoke one another to good works. We ought to be plenteous in them. Hello, somebody. So even though they don't go to church, they can at least think you're a good person. All right. 
Amen. That's not always the case. There are some who name the name of the Lord Jesus that treat folk that's not in church like they're the scum of the earth. And the fact of the matter is, I don't care who saved the day, they wasn't always saved. That's right. Jesus. Hallelujah. We all came from somewhere. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Sin and come short yes. of the glory of God. The Bible says we are laid in a balance and found wanting. Yeah. The Bible said if one say he has not sinned, he lied. Yeah. Woo. Jesus. Hello. Yes. And some of us were worse than some of them. All right. Come on, Bishop. All right. Now. Jesus. They matter to God. Yes, they do. And they ought to matter enough that our heart go toward those who are not in the house as well as those who are in the house. Sometimes we do all right with the ones right around us. Oh, bless you, God. Bless you, Lord. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And then we can look at them across the street and we say, that's a drug house. We won't even say hi. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Hello. And I'm not talking about necessarily around your house. I'm talking about right here at the church. Hallelujah. For walk right by the sidewalk. I've seen it happen. And then we won't even say it. My God. Yeah. How are we going to show the love of God when we shun folk like they don't matter? Amen. So you have a lot of folk outside of church that feel like they can't come to church nowhere because the people in church look down on them. Yeah. Yes. And it's not like they're making it up. They just giving a report. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, somebody. You see, this word is to be lived out and walked out day by day in every aspect of our lives. Because they matter to God. They really do matter. You say, but they're drunk. Yeah. But they still matter to God. You say, they're drug heads. But they matter to God. You said they're the biggest liar I know. I don't want nobody lie like this. I mean, you look up, it's noon time, they're talking about it's night. You know they lying. Oh, <laughs> well, it's night somewhere. All right now. They partly right. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. But they matter to God. Yes, man. And, and you and I will do well to align ourselves with the things of God. Now, we didn't go ahead and read this far into the, the text, but the Bible goes on to, to let us know that they said, okay, i tell you what you want to know. You want to know what you can do for us? We don't want your silver, king. We don't want your gold or any of that kind of stuff. So what we want is seven of his sons. We want to kill them. Yeah. As it were, we want blood for blood. Yeah. Amen. Now, 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 let me let me tell you. Uh, when God got a blessing for you, you're in good shape. Yeah. Amen. If you don't mess it up, you'll be all right. Amen. Right? All right. Bible tells us uh, that one of one of Saul's children, as it were, or actually it was his grandchild. Uh, Mephibosheth. Yes. And uh, he was he was also kind of in line to be chopped up. Yeah. Because what they want to do is take their heads off. Mm-hmm. But but God watched out for him. Oh God. Woo. All right. Yeah. You may not look like king material. All right. But that don't mean you're not king material. Right. Come on, Bishop. You may not look like royalty, but that doesn't mean you're not royalty. Amen. Amen. Come on here. Amen. You know, uh, uh, when it came in Israel, uh, uh, when, when they picked, uh, uh, and when God chose, commonly he did not choose uh, uh, the lambs that were blemished. He said he wants lambs without blemishes. He, he wanted stuff right, amen. And, and folk that had, you know, with feet turned the wrong way, all and right. you know, cock eyed, and all that, uh, uh, you know, cross eyed. They they couldn't, you know, they wasn't part of priesthood. No, they were. Oh, because there was there was a standard God had. 
And uh, 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 so here, here, uh, uh, Mephibosheth, he was crippled. And uh, he was crippled as a baby. He got dropped. Yeah. Messed up his little legs. And uh, here he is living like, living like a beggar. And, and, and not feeling really that value. But I, I declare to you today that you have value above what anybody can see. All right, right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You have value above what you see in your own self. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have value above what you see in your own self. Here he is, Mephibosheth, and he's living in a strange place, as it were. He's living in a low place, low to bar. Amen. But, but, but God has a blessing for Mephibosheth because he was Jonathan's son, and Jonathan was David's friend, and Jonathan helped David, who was God, the apple of God's eye, and God did not forget Jonathan's son, even though Jonathan was dead, even though Jonathan's father Saul killed the Gibeonites, God protected his offspring and caused Mephibosheth to end up in the king's palace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Do you know your life can turn around overnight? Yes. yes. You go to bed one way. Yes, Lord. And wake up another way. Amen. I'm not asking you that. I'm telling you that. It, it, it's untold numbers of accounts where where um, folk have where folk have are we all right here? Okay, now that y'all turned it off. <laughs> Thank you. I'm preaching good. Don't do that when I'm preaching Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. All right. We're back now. All right, y'all. Y'all keep, y'all keep me alive. All right, well, praise the Lord. Um, now, now, Mephibosheth, life turned around in an instant. He went from, if you will, being poor to, as it were, being rich. Mm. Come on, Bishop. Riches are coming too. Amen. There's some riches coming. Amen. I'm not asking it, I'm declaring it. All right. Amen. There's some there's increase coming. Monetary. Financial. Amen. Increase. Hallelujah. And, and and so this man, uh, 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 his Jonathan's son, now ends up sitting at the king's table for the rest of his day. Hallelujah. See, God knows how to promote you. Yes. I said God knows how to promote you. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, listen, listen. Yes. There's a blessing that's waiting on you right now. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, 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 I, I told y'all that, that, that stuff going to follow you whether it's an obedience or disobedience stuff follow you, right? Amen. And, and uh, when you do right, Right produces its own fruit. Yes. Amen. And so does wrong. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan loved David and, and helped David out when his father saw the king is trying to kill David. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a need for somebody to step up on someone else's behalf and help them out. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. We're supposed to be helpers one to another. Amen. And, and even though what Jonathan did, his father didn't approve of, Jonathan knew that it wasn't right what his father was trying to do to David. And so he would warn David and he would do what he could to protect David. And David and, and Jonathan were real good friends. But Jonathan would end up being killed in battle. And I, oh my God, help, help me in here today. Jonathan would end up being killed. Later his father would end up being killed. And, and now the, the uh, uh, Gibeonites are now given the opportunity to say whatever they want because of the famine that's in the land. The famine in the land has caused David to inquire of the Lord. There's things 
means I will make you pray. Jesus. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. you can come to situations in your life when the things of God never seem to matter so much until certain times and then you can't help but think of God. Somehow he get to be the center of the focus. Somehow he get to be at the pinnacle of the mountain. He gets to be the most important thing in life. Yes, 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 that's where he belongs and that's where we need to keep it. Yes, I pray that you don't have to suffer loss to see him. I pray that you don't have to suffer loss to sin. Yeah. Yeah. But it's happened. It's happened more than once in Scripture. It's happened for named folk. All right. In fact, the Bible tells us about Isaiah. Uh -huh. And it wasn't until King Uzziah died that he began to see the Lord yes. high yes. and lifted up. Yes. Hey, yes. glory yes. to God. Yes. God is not like man. Hello, somebody. Yes. Yes. Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Yes. God is not like us. God is a far above all of us. Yes. Yes. Hello. He's yes. just. He's righteous. He's holy in all of his ways. Yes. And sometimes yes. we don't see him as that. And we may not put him in his rightful place or we have it, but thanks be to God, we're going to do it and we're going to do it better. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. We're going to put him in his rightful place. We're going to put him at the top. We're going to hold him to his counsel. We're going to follow his word. We're going to obey his yes. command. And we're going to walk in his blessing. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. They matter. They matter. They matter. They matter to God. They matter. It doesn't matter if you're talking about children. They matter. Yeah. You know, there was a, a saying that, that used to be said quite a bit. We would hear it various times. Some in here probably said it. It said, children ought to be seen and not heard. Yeah. 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 Amen. There are some folk that feel like parents don't matter. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's like, huh, you 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 ought to be glad I'm here. Or oh, I ain't asked to be born. <laughs> Come on, Bishop. No, 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 no. This is real. We're living in a, a time and a season where it seems like disrespect yes, Bishop. has gotten to be the order of the day. Yes. Lack of respect for authority. Has gotten to be a a, a, a trend yeah. as it were, yeah. a fad that, right. that folks seem like it's all right to just disrespect whoever you want to disrespect. It has nothing to do with their position, have nothing to do with what they've done. You just disrespect because you feel like you can. But I'm telling you today, God, they matter to God. So we can disregard the children, we can disregard the parent, we can yeah. disregard the orphan, we can disregard the drug addict, but they matter to God. Yes. Amen. It is so. It is so. And you and I today do well to value everybody God allows us to come in contact with. Amen. Amen. You know when it when it comes to when it comes to uh, the children, God speaks to the fathers. Now the fathers, you know, they hold the place of the authority mm -hmm. for the family. I mean, Amen. by the rights, that's, that's the order of God. Now, we know a lot of fathers are not in the right place, but, but according to the order of God, the father is the head of the household. That's right. That's okay? Right. And, and sometimes we like that head of the household title, but, but not live out the household, that head of household responsibility. All right now. So we want to tell everybody what to do, but we don't put bread on the table. All right now. We don't buy the diapers. We, we're not the one that's providing housing. Hello, uh -huh. somebody. Children ain't going naked if it was left up to us. All right, <laughs> Come on here. And the Bible says a man that doesn't provide for his own household is worse than an infidel. And so here God speaks to, to the fathers there in Ephesians 6, 4. And, and, and he tells the father some things they need to know. But, but not only here, we can look in Deuteronomy, we can look at various passages where God speaks to the head of the household and tells them what to do. Yes, 
And here, relative to the children, just talking about how they matter to God, God says, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. In other words, don't don't just mess with them and make them rebel against you. That's right. That's right. I don't know if you see it, but I've seen it. I've seen fathers yeah. act so immature. It's yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Just just yeah. mess with the child for no good cause. That's right. <coughs> and many times cause the child to disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've, I've seen it happen. Well, God speaks to the father and says, don't do that. That's right. Why? Because he cares about the child. Yeah. But he also cares about the parent. Yeah. He already know the parent going to sow some trouble in their life if they mess around and just provoke those children for no cause. That's right. Amen. Now, some do it because they don't know better. Right. Some do it because they don't care. Yeah. Hello. Amen. But the Lord says, fathers, concerning the children... So but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You and I, the men, ought to be leading our families to Jesus. Yes, right. We ought to be the examples that show them what godly living is really all about. Amen. Rather than showing them how to be whores. All right, now, thank you. How to be dogs. Thank you. Hello. In fact, somewhere that's like a pride, a badge of honor. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, I ain't just a dog. I'm a big dog. <laughs> no, 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 for real. Yeah, right. right. And, 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 and we ought to be, we ought to be living a life that's bringing such honor to God right. until our children, our neighbors, and whoever else watch our life, they see what a godly man is supposed to be like. They see a man that's going to stand in integrity, a man that's going to have character. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. It is so. Yes. It is so. God cares about the parents too. Yes, he does. So he tells the children. And this is where some folk really get it twisted. Now I've seen it happen with little children. And maybe you can give them a little something there. But but when you get older, look like you ought to know better. Yeah. Amen. But I've seen grown folk disrespect their parents like they don't matter. Yes. Yes. Teach it, Bishop. You Teach it. They're still your parent. Yes. Teach this. It doesn't matter that you're a parent yourself. They're still your parent. That's right. There's some, even now, That's there's right. what's called elder abuse. That's Jesus. Right. Elder abuse bespeaks of mistreatment of the elders in the household or the family. So sometimes you have children that's mistreating their parents or grandchildren that's mistreating their grandparents. And then you got to be careful because they matter to God. You say, but they keep asking me the same thing over and over. I just told them. Or they can't eat without wasting stuff on them. Or I'm the one that I clean them and care for them. But the devil is a lie. They matter to God. And if you want things well with your life, then you need to honor the order of God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hello, somebody. So he speaks to the children here in Ephesians 6 and 1. And he says, children, yes, obey Lord. your parents in the Lord. Yes, Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That's right. So yes, that Lord. it may be well with you. Yes, that it may be what? Well. well with you that thou mayest live long on the earth. In other words, God says, if you honor your mother and father, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to cause you to see good day. Oh, hallelujah. My God, I'm going to open doors for you. I'm going to make way for you. I'm going to watch out for you. They matter to God. Your parents matter. Now, you might think they don't know nothing. You know, they old time it and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, growing up, some of us think our parents ain't smart as we are. Hello. Y'all know I know what I'm talking about. Y'all little children. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's right. Oh, we were those children. Hello, somebody. That's right. Amen. Amen. But thank God, you know, the Lord opened our eyes to see that. You know, it's amazing. It's, it's really kind of amazing how how when when uh, 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 we're, we're younger, we feel like the parents don't know a lot. Come Everybody on, Bishop. Don't. All right, now. And we don't like ask, well, how did they get to be a parent? But we just 
wonder why they don't see things our way. Right? right. And it seems like if they see it our way, they be seeing it right. I'm talking about when you're young. And then after you ever notice when you get much older, it's like, wow, they got so wise. Amen. Wow. Amen. It's like, man. You know, my mom, my dad, man, they, oh, man, they, they know a lot. And when you was young, it's like, you know, they ain't have enough to fill a teaspoon. <laughs> huh? Am I talking to anybody in here? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. Well, well, the Bible says if you honor them, this is not just when uh, our parents are, you know, middle age. This is always. always. Yes. Amen. Right to the grave. Amen. So if they live 112 years, you're still supposed to honor them. Yes. You're still supposed to be careful how you entreat them. Hello, somebody. You're still supposed to care for them. Oh, God. God deliver us from the folk who feel like they grown and they still want mom and daddy to take care of them. They don't stand on their own two feet. Mm. Say so. My Amen. God. Tell the truth. Amen. Jesus. God cares not only about the parent. Yes. Not only does he care about the child, God cares about the other one. Right. Yes. Yes, he does. You know, folk are, 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 are aborting just because they feel like a baby would really get in their way right about now. Mm. But then they go do the stuff to make a baby. That's right. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do just what it takes to make a baby. Mm -hmm. And then feel like I'll get rid of it. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But the baby is not like a wrapper on, on, on some snack you got. You just throw it away. All right, now. No, no. The, the unborn matter to God. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go by. In Psalms 127. Psalms 127 verse 3. You need to know that they matter to God. That this, you know, that this thing here, that people matter to God, therefore people matter to me. You say, but there ain't no person. They are embryo. They are mass. Hello? Come on here. I know I'm talking to somebody. Teach Bishop. Y'all young ladies, don't let folk fool y'all up. They're going to destroy them babies. Come on. If you don't want them, do what you need to do not to have them. Amen. Teach Bishop. Hello? Amen. Psalms 127 said, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. That's right. Oh God. Amen. Bible said the thing that comes out of the womb is his reward. Amen. The, the babies matter to God. Now, now, the, the, in fact, I'm going to read a few more verses there. Then, then I'm going to take you somewhere else. Um, verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Now, now how many of y'all ever got in a fight because somebody talked about your mom? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Only a third? Wait a minute, let me ask the question again. How many of y'all have gotten in a fight because somebody talked Come about your mama, your daddy? Oh, okay, I thought I was in the right place. <laughs> and for those of you that didn't get in a fight, how many of y'all wanted to? Oh, yeah. Y'all might look scared that you couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go to 100. Zero to 100. Some, it didn't matter. I might get beat, but you ain't gonna keep talking about my mom. Oh yeah. <laughs> do y'all know? Do y'all know there are some Bible relative to that? Did y'all know that? That's why you need to go in the Word. Let's read the next verse. Next verse. <laughs> Bible says, "Happy is the man that had his quivers full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemy in the gate." All right. In other words, anybody that come against the crib, your children rising up. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah, they rising up. Listen, listen. I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, five baptized, tongue talking, faith walking, but don't come up against the crib. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you wonder why the kids, they, you have to fight because somebody, they don't even know me. You know this 
mom and daddy talk. They don't even know us. That's right. That's what the child is. <laughs> you know, they like the bull, man. They breathing out, they breathing fire. You understand? Uh -huh. Come on here. Oh, yeah. But I'm telling you, you know, they matter to God. That's what they matter to God. Let me, let me just give you this one scripture, then we're going we're gonna to get our, our offer. We're going to pray and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go to Psalms 139. I'm talking about the unborn. You, you, I, and those of you, you got children, you got siblings, you got grands and friends. Amen. You, you want to caution them against destroying those babies. Amen. Better to use the wisdom of God and not make the baby than to destroy a life you didn't make. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. Some of y'all are like, I did make it. I'm the one done. Amen. Bomb wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Do you know that folk are trying to make a baby every day and have done it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and still never got a baby? Amen. So just because you come together with somebody else doesn't make a baby. That's right, man. There's folk that, that even try to go test to and it don't always make a baby. The Bible says God is the giver of That's life. Right now. So just because you got in the way didn't make it happen. That's right, man. God, let me unpack that for you. Yes. God in his infinite wisdom seen fit to bring a child forth. And who are you to defy the wisdom of God and say, I'm going to cut it off? Tell the truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. Are you there in Psalms 139? Amen. Verse 13. Amen. Says, for thou hast possessed my reign. Thou hast covered me when? In my mother's what? This child is yet unborn. That's right. This this child is yet unborn. Bible say you possess my reins and you covered me in my mother's womb. Somebody said, no, that was the amniotic sac. That was the, the placenta. The Bible said God covers that child. Woo! Jesus. Goes on and says, uh, uh, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. So here the writer said, Listen, I, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, I'm no accident. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm no accident. <laughs> You see, sometimes there are some of us, we've been conceived, there are some folks, they've been conceived in a rape, they've been conceived in some other kind of situation, that unplanned pregnancy and all that, and you, you know, you may have been told you, you weren't even supposed to be here anyway. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I wish I never had you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There are some folks who upset it. Yeah. And, and if you are careful, you can leave feeling like, man, gosh, you, you almost wish you wasn't born. But I'm telling you today, you are not an accident. Hallelujah. You are in the mind of God. You are in the mind of God. And you are brought forth because of God. Why? Because they matter. You matter to God. That's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is so. It is so. Amen. Let's read just a little further. Let's, let's read just a little, a little further. Verse 15. Says my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thy eyes, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet. There was none of them. So before I had my little fingers and my little toes, before I had my little arms and my big head, the Bible said, well, all that was just a mess. He said, you made me. Glory to God. You better hear me today. They matter to God. Amen. Amen. It is so. It is so. It is so. It matters. Yes. God. I don't have time right now to go into the poor, to go into the orphan, to go into the stranger, to go into the wife, to go into the believer. 
time won't permit me that luxury right now. But I'm telling you, people matter to God. Yes. Amen. Even the unborn people. Yes. Jesus. Let me tell you just, just another little, just a tidbit about how the unborn matters to God. The Bible talks about to the third and fourth generation. Yeah. Then it talks about to a thousand generations. These are unborn. Amen. Are you hearing? Amen. And I don't know how many of you think much about the unborn because you say, well, my baby is born now. My baby's done had babies. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think about my unborn lineage. Right. I pray for my posterity. The All word right posterity now. that speaks of those who are not born yet. I pray for my family that's not born yet. Right I cover them now. I speak the blessings of God over their life now. Amen. They matter to me. Why? Because they matter to God. That's right. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Getting ready to pray. Thank you. Anybody get blessed? Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Or from Jesus, God has taken us someplace and it's someplace good. Mm -hmm. yes. And you and I have to be mindful, Amen. cognizant, attentive. To what God is saying in this hour to us. The Bible says, hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Amen. Amen. And uh, I trust today that as you continue on this journey in life, you will demonstrate the love of God to the people you come in contact with. I'm not asking you to like them, but you got to love them. Amen. 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 Y'all love them. I'm not asking you to hang out with them. I'm not asking you to invite them in your house. You be persuaded in your own mind about that. But you can't minimize them. Amen. Amen. Can't just ridicule them. Can't, can't walk on them. Hello. And then there's a whole lot of folks we just need to take our mouth off of. Amen. It is. Listen, because we all matter to God, He wants us to be a part of the family. He wants us to live a life that is in alignment with His purpose and plan for us. And His purpose and plan for us is only good and not evil. It is so. Oh, if there's any today, you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. But you want to I'll pray for you. Those of you today, you say, God, Lord, I, I just want to do it better. You might be one of those who you've avoided already. Well, you can't undo that. that, that that's done. You can't undo that. And this is not a time to go on a guilt trip concern. Mm -hmm. But what we can resolve is I won't do it again. I won't encourage anybody else to do it. God's forgiveness and I are moving on. All right, now. There may be somebody in here you haven't given proper respect to your parents. All right, now. You can make up your mind. I'm not going to keep disrespecting my parents. I'm going to honor them. Come on. Yes, okay. Your child. I'm going to do it better. Why? Because they matter. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you would love us enough as to send us your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for convicting our hearts. Thank you for ministering to us, God, as only you can. Illuminating truths at the level of our comprehension. That we may honor you the more. I do pray now for this company, God. Thank you for the blessings that you have in store for us. And that even now we have set ourselves to align with your purpose and plan more in the days ahead than we have in the days past. Amen. Lord Jesus, take the lead in our lives. Yes, Lord. 
Lord Jesus, be not only our Savior, but be our Lord. We surrender and submit to you today that you might be honored and glorified in all through the life that you allow us. And for these things that we ask, we also do now declare in Jesus' mighty name. And the people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Give